It's a wonderful afternoon. God bless you so much. My name is Timothy Prophet, an apostle of Christ, and I believe in God and in Jesus Christ, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit, our helper. Today, I just want to talk to you something very minor that you have been reading every now and then, and possibly you've never captured what is inside. Maybe you have captured, but you didn't take attention on to it now. Today, one time, the disciples were walking into a place, together with Jesus, of course, and they had a meeting them. And by having a meeting in a certain place, now there's a series of teachings here and there. They got lessons from Jesus, a lot of lessons. So they asked questions as well as they continued with the meeting until very late. The Bible explained that they stayed for a long time. Now, one of the questions that captured my, my attention to talk about today is when they asked, Oh Lord, now how do we pray if we pray? That means this has been a problem for them for quite a good time now. They were tired of now pretending and they say, no, if these things would be happening to you, they should be happening also to us because you say greater things shall we do more than the things we saw earlier before. So by this time, they asked the question, how do we pray then? There are several questions like how to give offerings, how to give arms, how to give help, support here and there, and also how to pray. They ask this question. So Jesus starts asking, uh, answering this question in Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. And when you pray, you should not be like hypocrites are for the love of to pray standing. Now, this is how hypocrites pray. They pray standing in synagogues as some strategic corners and streets. So to be seen by men. And I can relate to this because so many other people say that one is a prayer warrior. Wait until he take the microphone, you will hear prayer. Now, and then this answer, verily I say unto them, they have their reward already. So are these people, what are the rewards they have? If you pray in public, that sight that people say, oh, look at this man, a graced man. <laughs> That's their pay. Now you have answered some of your questions. Some people who say, why doesn't God give us answers to our prayers? How does God give answers to our prayers? Why not answer me, oh Lord? This is the reason. Because your answer already are given by men. And I can tell you this. People who wait for men to answer them in the public, most of them, they never get answers. They get tired on the way. But now there are places where you go, hide yourself. This is now the square, the, the closet. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, no one will know you are praying there. And when thou hast shut thy door, it doesn't mean you shut your door. It means you are praying in your confidential way. Pray to thy father which is in the secret, and thy father which sees in the secret shall reward you openly. And I've seen these prayers because many people want this kind of exploitation. All men applaud them that this is a prayer sign. And this is against the revival principle. And this is how the revival does not work. You get so much busy with things that do not really matter at times. And then we expect God to come into our situations. He doesn't come. There are principles that are used to come. And so he teaches them how to pray. Now in verse 10. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is very, very popular prayer that is prayed literally everywhere. Everybody knows the Lord's prayer. And this is how it comes in. Now, how important it is to pursue the principles of the Lord's prayer by acknowledging God. There is a difference. Once God is acknowledged and the principles of heaven are already acknowledged, there is something different we have on the table with anybody that takes it up to a different level. What am I saying to you that where your prayer life should be very consistent, very consistent in your private prayer. What we see you pray outside here should not match what you pray in your closet. When I see you pray on the altar, I should relate your prayer on the altar like almost 1% of what you pray in the closet. When I watch at you, if all your prayers is what I see down there, 
then you have not started praying. You haven't. When all the prayers you pray is what I see you pray in church, walking around, walking here and there. You have not prayed, my brother, my sister. You don't have prayer. When all the prayers I know, I see, is only the ones I see you pray. When you grow in your closets, when you grow in your country, when you grow in your places, when all your prayers you pray is what we see here. You have not started praying. The prayers you see in the closet should be much, much like 95% of your prayer life. What we see here, even if you pray so much that we shake when we pray, when we pray together with you, we see mountains shaking. That prayer you pray there should be almost at most 5%, only 5% of what you do in your closet. That is why so many times I can spend like one whole day, if I'm not going anywhere, pray, reaching out to God. And when I come out of the place, literally I see everything around me moving. Leave alone what you know. When I complete my prayer sessions in the secret, even if you don't know, you will know something is not right with this man. And I will tell you how I do know. There are places where you go after coming smokingly from the presence of God. People with demons will feel irritated in your presence. That, in fact, that's how I know people, witches. That's how I know witches. When I come out of the closet praying for, from the presence of God, taking it from God's perspective of prayer, the moment I reach where witches are, I will know. You, I, you don't need to be a prophet. You will know when you come from prayer, you will smell some ascent of another environment in a place. If you go to a place where you see people are like, who is this one? Who is this one? Who is this one? Why do you, this, this, this? No, if you came from a soaking prayer life, you can tell who walks for in the kingdom of God. I'm not talking about I have a microphone now. I say fire, fire. That fire that comes out when you have microphone is not molded on that altar. It's molded on the closet where you are all day when you spend it. This is how prophets commune. Prophets have encounters in the secret. And when they come out in the public, something has been deposited in the secret is now what comes out. The prayer life of a saint is well undertaken in the private. And when it's outside here now is when we see the grace of God working. May you have all your prayer strength in your closet. May God reach you out and commune with you from your prayer closet. That's exactly what you need. In your prayer closet, you will have grace. In your prayer closet, you will have glory. In your prayer closet, you will have manifestation. All the manifestation you see live in the crusades or in the prayer service or in the deliverance service we hold every other places, those prayers, you don't see them there. We pray back in the closet, down back there. And that closet prayer, those are the prayer sections we meet when we have God. You place God on a set of victory in places where God has to sit with you. And this is exactly what I tell you. Wherever you go in any location, whatever you do in such places depends on how you get to God in your secret place, in your closets. If you don't pray, you have nothing to offer. If you don't pray in your secret, I who pray in the secret. If, in fact, when I meet you, I've met so many people who say I'm a prayer warrior. When I smoke like this in the spirit, they're not there. They're not there, I can tell you. Because when you come from the closest in the communion of God's presence, that's where prophets nudge it, takes place. The prophets take 
roots from those areas, from those areas, from those areas, from those. Areas. I've seen men, men that we don't know. When we go out for evangelism, when we, we meet men that no one know, no one cannot identify, even if you tell them this is a man of God, they don't even understand what you are saying because it does not look at it. But you deep inside your spirit and in the spirit arena, in the spiritual realm, you realize the prayer points this man has had for the past like four years, five years. Many pastors don't even have them. What I'm trying to talk about is the grace that pertains a man. The grace that works with a man. It's not just a grace. It is acquired grace in the secret place. The closed place. The secret place, most people relate this secret place to a place of trouble, a place of uh, wilderness, the place of nothing happens, the place of wash. I'm talking about the communion place, the secret place, the place where you meet your God. In my village, in the village, there is a place in my land, in my farm, when I go there and sit there, for only one hour to pray with my Bible and with everything. Maybe nobody can even know what I'm doing there. But I have an altar in my village, in a farm. When I go back home in my home, where I stay and where I walk, there is a time of prayer where I remove my shoes and go back there and pray there honestly. Even in my house here in Nairobi, there is a room I go and I pray. I take my shoes out and I start praying. It doesn't matter what happened in my life. I will come out of the place with revival in my spirit. With a punch of the spirit of God in me. Prayer is a, a union. Leave alone these prayers people pray. I see so many. Sometimes I will go to a church service some places. And I see men smoking guns on top of a microphone. And I know but. This this man doesn't know <laughs> what he's doing. And I've also seen people de doing deliverance in different places, in different places here and there. And I look at this and I see the understanding of the Spirit of God does not reach them. It's not there. Now, the disciples were tired of pretending. And they had to say, ah, no, Jesus, we are prayed to and we see these things happening here and there. But then what is wrong with us? Because these prayers are not coming. What's the problem? Now I want to give you the answers. Pray in the formula of the Lord's Prayer. Go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. That's an assignment I'm giving to you. Matthew chapter 6, you go the formulation of the prayer that tax God. The environment of this prayer is in your closet. A secret place, a place you close and you are there. You may be there alone. There are some other prayers that you don't even go there with your wife. You don't even go there with your husband. You alone get there to nourish your spirit with your communion with God. That's exactly what happens in such places. And I want to tell you, may God reach out to you and strengthen you in your secret places of your prayer. Let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, this sister, this brother that is watching me right now, I pray every place that she goes, let there be glory that pertains them. Let there be manifestation of your courts. Let everything that they do manifest in their lives now and forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray and believe. Amen and amen. May God bless you wherever you are going and glorify himself in you as you continue in prayers and in supplication.